everyone, welcome back to our personal narrative lessons. Today we are going to be doing lesson 14 and 15. And in these lessons, we are going to talk about revising and editing our rough drafts for um, to get ready for our final draft. And so I'm going to go ahead, you are going to see that this is going to be your assignment for today. You are going to see that you have um, a little checklist for both revising as well as editing. And your job is to take these little check marks and after you've completed a task, you are going to click and you are going to drag it over to the check mark to make sure that you have completed that. You only are going to click and drag it once you have completed that job. If you have not completed that job, please do not check it off because otherwise you're telling me you've completed something that you haven't. So keep that in mind. And so for revising, we are going to be looking at our writing style. And so we're going to go through these one by one and make sure that we have um, completed those. Um, for time purposes, I am not going to go one by one through these because I want to value your guys' time, um, but I want to model for you still what my expectations are in completing these jobs. And so we are going to go ahead. You can see on the side here, Miss Walsh made speakers. Um, I made audio for you guys so I can read um, the jobs out loud for you so you will have those as needed and so I'm going to go ahead I'm going to zoom in I'm going to use my magnifying glass and zoom in and you can see it comes up a lot clearer that way and I'm going to go ahead I'm going to look at the beginning portion of my rough draft it says I included a strong lead to grab the attention of my readers I use details to describe the setting I introduced important characters. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go back to my camera. And what's so, so important when I'm going back to my rough draft to check these items off is I need to reread my rough draft. And when I reread, I need to read out loud or whisper read. This is not a time to read in your brain because your brain might skip over mistakes. Sometimes our brain, um, knows what we're trying to say and it will allow us to skip over mistakes we made. So if you say it out loud, you're more likely to catch mistakes. So please, please, please read out loud as that will help you best. And so it says, it was as though I had fallen right into the pages of the Harry Potter books. I was in Diagon Alley and the sweet smell of butterbeer wafted through the air. It felt as if I was truly in London. Hurry up, let's go, my sister shouted out at me. I snapped out of my state of shock as I saw my mom, dad, and sister make their way towards the most anticipated part of our trip. Next thing I knew, I was standing in front of the tall, white building known as Gringotts Bank in the world of Harry Potter. Sitting right on top of that building was a massive, pale, gray dragon covered in marks, looking as if he had just escaped the bank. Are you ready? asked my mom. I exclaimed, oh, you know I am. And so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go back to my writing or to my checklist, and I'm going to make sure that I've completed all these jobs. So it says, I included a strong lead to grab the attention of my readers. Well, I start talking about how I feel like I'm exactly in the book, and I think that's a really interesting way to start my story. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to click, and I'm going to drag it off here. Then I have, I used details to describe the setting. Well, I used a lot of details here. I do, I did note when I was looking at this though, I didn't really specify that I was at Universal Studios in the Harry Potter theme park. So I can go ahead and I can add. You can see that there's wide lines here so that way you can add. I'm using a different colored um, writing tool. I was using a blue pen. Um, if, so I'm gonna go ahead with a green colored pencil. I'm gonna write any edits I need to make. And so I was in Diagon Alley of Universal Studios. So that way my reader kind of knows like exactly where I was because otherwise they have really no idea. They're like, a Diagon Alley? Like, where are you talking about? So if I specify that it's also in Universal Studios, they'll have a better idea um, of what it is I'm referring to. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to close. 
And now I can go ahead and I can add a check mark for that one. Then I introduced important characters. Well, if I go back to my story, I can see I introduced my mom, my dad, my sister, and myself. And we're the main characters in this story. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to minimize it again, and I'm going to check that guy off. Then I would go through and I'd look through all these other options. I included sensory details, used transitions, included dialogue. Dialogue is going to be so, so, so important to our narrative. Dialogue is what makes a narrative a narrative. So make sure that you are um, checking for dialogue as well. Then you have your end expectations as well as overall writing style. Now, I really want to emphasize these last two points where it says, can I substitute any words to vary my word choice and add meaning? So remember when we worked on that descriptive adjectives, descriptive verbs, make sure you are not using words over and over again that are boring words, right? We don't want to keep saying said, 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 right? So in Miss Walsh's story, you can already see that. I said, shouted out at me. I included, asked my mom. I exclaimed, right? And so that's a little bit more exciting. And I'm also being way more specific about how I'm projecting or how that person's speaking um, rather than just saying said, right? And so make sure you go back and you look to make sure you're using that descriptive language. And then finally, did I vary my sentence style? We talked about this previously with our ouch moments narrative. Make sure you aren't starting your sentences the same way. Otherwise, it gets a little bit boring and your reader becomes disinterested. And so now we're going to go ahead. We are going to move on to our slide number two. Remember, your job is to go through and check all of this. You are going to read your um, rough draft out loud or whisper read it. Um, so that way you can catch those mistakes. We're going to move to slide number two, and you're going to see we're going to talk now about editing. So editing is different from revising because in revising, we're looking at how the story is written. While editing, now we're looking for those little conventional errors. And so we're going to start with this first guy right here, and I already know I have not done this. So it says, include a capitalized title. Well, I know I didn't include a title for my rough draft, so now I need to add a title to my story. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come up with a title for my story. And I want to make it something exciting um, that my reader will want to read. And because I didn't make enough space up here at the top, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change that. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write my title. Miss Walsh escapes Gringotts. And I'm going to underline my title. I made sure that I capitalized the words in my title. All words in your title should be capitalized unless their um, smaller convent parts of speech like the or and um, and so keep that in mind. So I have Miss Walsh escapes Gringotts and that is going to be my title and again I'm using a different colored um, pencil or pen to mark any corrections that I made. So now I can go back to my editing list and I can check it off. Then it asks me, all paragraphs are indented. Well, I know they are because I made sure for each time I start a new paragraph that I added that indentation as I talked about with you guys, making sure I have space between. Um, so that way my reader knows that I started a new paragraph and that there is a change in time. So I can go ahead and I can check that one off as well and I would just continue through and make sure I complete these other jobs. Again, Miss Walsh has created audio um, to help you and I really want to emphasize again a couple of um, the different um, items on this list. One of them most importantly 
is going to be quotation marks are used correctly and as needed. So anytime you're using dialogue, whether it's something you said out loud or it's something you said in your brain in the story, you need to make sure you include those quotation marks. We talked about that during dialogue lesson. So if you need to go back, please rewatch that video um, because that's going to really help you and make sure that you are using your quotation marks correctly. Then I also, also really want to point out these three items. Each sentence begins with a capital letter. You guys are such scholars, and so my expectation is that each sentence begins with a capital letter. You guys do know better, so please do so. Um, each sentence ends with an appropriate end mark, so a period, a question mark, an exclamation point, whatever is most appropriate to that sentence, make sure it ends with that mark. And then finally, all proper nouns are capitalized. And so making sure that anytime you list the specific name of a place or a person, that that should be capitalized. Um, make sure, again, mom, dad, sister, those are common nouns, so you do not need to capitalize those. Um, and make sure you do capitalize your pronoun I. So anytime you say I went to blah blah blah, the I needs to be capitalized. Um, you guys do know that. Um, that's something that you've been taught since first grade, so please do keep that in mind. I'll go ahead and leave this check mark here for right now. And then you're going to see that there is a second column. This second column says peer edit. For peer edit, your job is to find someone in your house that is older to look over your writing. And so what I mean by someone that is older, I mean someone that is actually in third grade or older um, or a higher grade. That way you're making sure you have someone that is at your level or higher looking at your work um, to make sure that it is the best that it can be. So someone that can peer edit your writing it could be an older sibling, older brother or sister. Um, it could be stepmom. It could be stepdad. It could be mom, dad, aunt, uncle grandma, grandpa, cousins, just as long as it is someone that is older than you, um, they can go ahead and they can look at your writing for you. Um, and that is going to be it for your jobs today. You're going to be just working on editing and revising, making it the best you can possibly do so. Um, so that way, when it comes time for our final draft, you guys will be good to go. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye, D1.